Thank you, Jeff, and good morning, everyone. Let's see. I'm Kamal Kayat from Missouri University of Science and Technology, and uh, happy to be with you today. I hope everyone's staying safe. I'm going to be speaking about the couple effect of lightweight aggregate and shrinkage, shrinkage mitigating strategies um, on uh, performance of uh, SEC designated for repair. All right, uh, I'd like to recognize the sponsors for this study uh, that are listed on the Top right, this study was done uh, when I was at the University of Sherbrooke in collaboration with Beton Provincial, Euclid Canada, Northeast Solite, Transport Quebec, Transport Canada, and the city of Montreal. And if you're interested in finding more about the work, there's a couple of publications that summarize some of the findings that I'll be summarizing today. So SCC uh, has been used quite a bit in repair application because of its high durability, but also its ability to facilitate uh, construction operations, like in this case, rehabilitation of a, a bridge, uh, of bridge elements, where the placement of the concrete is hindered by different type of uh, elements, and the concrete has to be cast into place uh, in very restricted areas. Um, and it flows very nicely and encapsulates the rebars, but as you could see in this application, we have a high risk of um, restraint shrinkage cracking. And this is especially uh, high in the case of SCC that requires high paste volume. And in some cases, the SCC is designed with relatively low water binder ratios, uh, giving rise to high risk of uh, autogenous shrinkage. Plus some of the SCCs are designed with low water to binder ratio, which develops its elastic modulus fairly fast. And you can see here the results of three SCCs um, in the restraint shrinkage test. With the first one on the left, design was a lower to binder uh, ratio strategy uh, to increase viscosity and stability. And you see it cracks after five days. But if you go with a higher water binder ratio, just enough to give, give you the durability that you need uh, and a VMA to enhance stability, you can extend that. But what you could really do also is uh, use some uh, fibers. We did some work with uh, different type of synthetic fibers and later on also steel fibers. But 0.5% synthetic fiber uh, can extend the time to cracking quite a bit. And 0.25 comes very, very close to it. So based on this, the city of Montreal started using uh, fibers in many repair applications. This is a project uh, for repair of a retaining wall underpass in a city, uh, 200 linear meter was all repaired using SCC, fiber reinforced SCC with 0.25% synthetic fibers. And the idea over here is to uh, increase the service life of the repair by reducing the cracking potential. What we wanted to do in this project is to explore the possibility of using uh, lightweight sand and lightweight coarse aggregates uh, to enhance the engineering properties and the cracking resistance of uh, these fiber reinforced SCC materials. So the lightweight aggregate, as you know, it has lower elastic modulus and can develop better ITZ and can sustain uh, more uh, solicitation. So the objective of the work was to evaluate the advantages and limitations of using uh, both lightweight sand for internal curing, but also lightweight coarse aggregate for internal curing, but also further reduction of elastic modulus on the performance of fiber of reinforced SCC, and also explore some of the synergistic effects of using lightweight aggregate with shrinkage reducing admixtures uh, or expensive agents. The expensive agent that was used in this case is a calcium based expensive agent. Uh, so the parameters that were um, investigated here uh, where the use or not of lightweight aggregates, uh, fibers, synthetic fibers at relatively low dosage, three types of lightweight coarse aggregates introduced at three, three different volume contents of, or replacements, and lightweight sand, zero or 20%. And then we looked at two dosages of SRAs and expensive agents. For the lightweight aggregate, we had uh, three types, uh, expanded shale that have an has an absorption of about 9% and two expanded, uh, sorry, slate, two expanded shales at 14 and 
And for the lightweight uh, sand, it was expanded shale at 21% absorption rate. The water, the, the, all the mixtures that were tested here uh, were proven mixtures for repair applications. Their high performance concretes was water to bond the ratio of 0.38. And we are using a totally cement that contains uh, about 25% class uh, F fly ash and approximately 5% silica fume replacement. And all the concretes were in, air entrained and had the same targeted slump, slump flow. So in the first uh, phase of the study, we wanted to look at the effect of uh, lightweight aggregate. Uh, so we had the lightweight sand, internal curing, 20% or 0%, coupled with 25% of uh, lightweight coarse aggregates. And we looked at the three different uh, coarse aggregates versus a control mixture, which did not have any coarse aggregates. So this concrete did not have any fibers, and all the mixtures uh, were subjected to very rigorous um, regime of testing of fresh properties, I make this including restraint shrinkage and creep and shrinkage um, and durability. So some of the results regarding the freezing and thawing. We see here after 300 cycles of freezing and thawing, none of the concrete has really any um, significant damage uh, from freezing and thawing. The robotic factor, 98% uh, all the way to about 100%. And you can see the spacing factor on all these concretes were very good. So in the red, you have the lightweight coarse aggregate with normal weight sand. And here we have in the blue, the lightweight coarse aggregate plus um, internal curing using lightweight sand. In terms of uh, the scale uh, scaling resistance, uh, after 50 cycles, we see the control mixture that did not have any uh, lightweight aggregate, has very low uh, damage. And then the three mixtures that had uh, a lightweight ag coarse aggregate and normal weight stands, they were getting to about 300 to 500, which is still very good. And we see that the same mixtures was lightweight coarse aggregate in blue and the lightweight sand the lightweight sand seems to have uh, improved the resistance to the icing salt scaling. So I only showed you frost durability and the icing salt scaling, but if you compare the effect of the lightweight sand, 20% or 25% coarse, coarse aggregate to the reference SCC without any lightweight materials, in terms of workability, uh, compressive strengths, elastic modules, et cetera, you can see that the positive or the negative, the positive means that it's a superior performance than the reference, which is SCC without any uh, lightweight aggregate for repair applications. And then you can see over here, uh, in terms of um, overall performance, all the lightweight sand or lightweight coarse aggregate or the couple of effect in this case of lightweight sand and coarse aggregate were beneficial. But all of this work was, was done initially without any fibers. We are interested in the fibers to extend the service life. So the remaining work I'm presenting today is, is made with synthetic fibers at 0.25%. Same mixture design. So we have a, a concrete here uh, with no lightweight aggregates. Another one here with 20% lightweight sand. And the rest of them are all with lightweight sand, 20% and 25% coarse aggregate. Again, we have three different kinds of coarse aggregate. And then for the coarse aggregate number three that had the highest absorption, we wanted also to see the effect of going to 35 and 50% replacement of the, coarse, of, of the coarse aggregate by volume of lightweight aggregate. And then we had the 25% coarse aggregate and 0% internal curing. So we looked at uh, many mechanical properties at different ages, just, just one of them, showing the compressive strengths after 56 days when you are replacing 20% of the sand by 20% of uh, lightweight sand, you see a slight increase in compressive strengths. By the way, these are all moist cured all the way until the age of testing. And when you are using uh, both 20% lightweight sand and 25% coarse aggregate, you, you don't see any effect on compressive strengths. But if you increase your uh, uh, replacement of coarse aggregate from 25 to 35 to 50 percent, you see a considerable reduction in mechanical properties. And the same thing for elastic modulus, which is very important uh, for repair applications. 
Um, compared to the control, use of 20% internal curing did not affect the elastic modulus. But when you introduce 25% coarse aggregate, regardless of the absorption rate, you can see that the porosity is reducing elastic modulus, which as a matter of fact is advantageous. And going from 35, 25 to 35 and 50%, you reduce also the elastic modulus. Uh, we looked at the RCPT at 56 days and all the mixtures, regardless of internal curing or coarse aggregate, uh, lightweight coarse aggregate, all the values were excellent. And that is uh, due, of course, to the low water to bond ratio of 0.38 and the ternary cement that was used. Now coming to shrinkage, uh, we looked at in, uh, autogen shrinkage of the concrete specimens because we need the fibers, uh, we need uh, the coarse aggregates, so we demolded the samples as fast as possible, and we wrapped them with uh, self-adhesive aluminum tape. Inside the samples, you have uh, embedded uh, vibrating strain gauges, and you can see over here at the bottom the, um, the shrinkage that was uh, obtained using the control uh, concrete, so fiber-reinforced concrete without any uh, lightweight sand or lightweight coarse aggregate, and that is reduced quite a bit when you introduce 20% internal curing using lightweight sand. And then going further, if you use uh, lightweight sand and lightweight coarse aggregate, you can provide more internal relative humidity, reducing the autogen shrinkage, causing, as a matter of fact, some expansion. And if you were to go even higher, you'll have more water. So all that is related and in the paper it's reported, all that is related to the amount of water that is needed to compensate for uh, chemical shrinkage, but also in this case to compensate also for uh, um, self desiccation. Uh, drying shrinkage was measured over one year. I'm showing the results after six months. Uh, and drying shrinkage was subjected, the specimen was subjected to seven days of moist curing followed by drying. And you can see that uh, with the internal curing, you go from 770 to 600. And if you have the 20% lightweight sand and the coarse aggregate at 25%, you reduce further, especially the coarse aggregate number three, which has the highest uh, absorption rate. And if you go further, 50%, um, also you reduce it. All right. So if you look at many results uh, that were um, obtained here, and uh, these are the coarse aggregates, in, in this case, only number three, uh, used at three different dosages or um, volume replacements. Compared to the reference with 20% lightweight sand, we see that there is an advantage in terms of elastic modulus. Uh, frost durability, there is none. The acid scaling uh, was slightly reduced. And then as you increase the amount of uh, replacement with the coarse aggregate, the, the acid scaling actually deteriorated. So overall performance, 25% uh, coarse aggregates compared to 20% only lightweight sand seems to have a good performance. And finally, we wanted to look at the effect of shrinkage reducing admixtures and expansive agents. And here I'm only showing uh, one dosage, uh, and that is SRA at 0.35% by mass of cement. And then uh, expansive agent calcium oxide rates 5%. So they are used always with the fibers, and with or without uh, lightweight sand. Uh, and all these mixtures uh, had the 25% uh, coarse aggregate number three. So in terms of uh, fresh properties, uh, again, the targeted slump flow is maintained. All the properties are very good. The VSI, we would like it to be zero. It was 0.5. Uh, in the mixtures that had SRA, we had to use uh, VMA. It's uh, written here. Viscosity enhancing agent, uh, it's the only time we had to use it uh, to ensure that the stability is adequate. Our target for stability is to secure a maximum settlement of 0.5. So you see, we, we, had to, uh, we, we got that. And the, um, this is a mixture without any uh, SRA or expensive agent at 0.25, 0.35. And the expensive agent uh, was very stable. In terms of uh, mechanical properties, again, these are all fiber-reinforced uh, SCCs made with 25% coarse aggregate to reduce the elastic modulus. So if you look at uh, initial strengths at one day, there was a slight lag of strengths comparing to the mixtures without any uh, SRA. 
and those with the expensive agent at 5% did not really suffer any mechanical properties. And uh, beyond 28 days, all the mechanical properties, uh, the splitting tensile, the elastic modules, they were all very similar. And in terms of frost durability, we see after 300 cycles, uh, this is a controlled concrete, uh, over 100%. The one with expensive agents, over 100%. Only the one that had lightweight sand coupled with the SRA uh, suffered some uh, damage, but still is way above uh, the 80% that we would like to have. And our RCPT values are really not affected by these materials. Where we saw a biggest effect was in de assing salt scaling. A thousand kilogram per square meter uh, or gram per square meter would be uh, the, the, the maximum limit. And here we see that uh, the concrete that had uh, uh, lightweight sand, 20% no coarse aggregate, uh, sorry, and all of them, by the way, are 25% coarse aggregate, uh, was very close to the limits. The same thing was uh, normal weight sand. But as we uh, do uh, start using SRAs, uh, it seems that the instability of the concrete uh, promoted some uh, uh, mortar layer to come to the surface. Uh, you only need a couple of millimeter at the surface uh, to surpass the 1,000 gram per square meter limit. And, uh, but the use of uh, uh, expensive agents uh, showed also pretty good performance uh, in, uh, compared to SRE. In terms of autogen shrinkage, uh, again, I remind you, all these mixtures already have 25% coarse aggregates, so there's internal curing happening. Uh, this is without lightweight sand. It was lightweight sand. So, and then in the green, you have the SRA. Again, with the lightweight sand, always you have better performance especially in the case of calcium oxide because you have internal curing uh, and water that is promoting the expansion. And if you look at the shrinkage, again, the shrinkage values with the expansion, um, expansion in blue, after seven days, you can see considerable expansion when you are using lightweight aggregates. And one thing that was really interesting is that the use of SRA in green or in blue uh, expensive agent delayed the onset of uh, shrinkage. So you had uh, quite a bit of time before shrinkage started to occur. And here we did not measure the um, restraint shrinkage, but uh, we have uh, developed uh, throughout the years uh, an algorithm that allows us to predict the cracking potential. And by that, we can predict the time of cracking uh, given the 56-day shrinkage time after, after moist curing and the elastic modulus at early age. And um, let's see, th these are predicted values and measured values that follow very well. So these are uh, calculated results, but what I'm interested in here is the time of cra to cracking. So we see that the concrete without any lightweight coarse aggregate and without any lightweight sand, the four days would be the time to cracking. And if you use internal curing, 20%, that increases to 13 days. But then if you load your system with 25% coarse aggregate, depending on the coarse aggregate, as well as the uh, normal weight sand, 19, 19 days, lightweight sand, 17 days, and again, 22 days uh, with, uh, uh, and 33 days. And if you compare, compare that to shrinkage mitigating um, strategies. Here we're only doing the SRA because expensive agent, the test does not uh, really work. We could see that uh, if you use 25% uh, coarse aggregate, uh, you go from 19% to 33% when you add some normal weight sand, uh, sorry, normal weight sand to lightweight sand, 20%. And with the SRA, uh, normal weight sand, 29 days, and lightweight sand, you go to 41. So definitely it's something we were encouraged to see and uh, take it to the field and try to do these fiber reinforced SCC repairs using either internal curing uh, or a coupled uh, effect of internal curing and if available, some coarse aggregates or uh, SRAs or expensive agents. So again, many results to, uh, to present here. I presented some of them, but this is uh, the reference. Everything is compared to the reference, which is a fiber reinforced concrete that was used in the initial applications. And if you compare that to internal curing, you can see that the workability is the same. Elastic modulus uh, uh, is decreasing, but for repair application, that's advantageous. No effect on frost durability. The acid salt scaling is improved. Overall, the performance is much improved when you are coupling 
the fibers and the internal curing. Uh, if you were to go now with the SRA or expansive agents, SRA because of the asking salt scaling, if, that is a, if that's a problem for you, depending where you are, uh, but uh, the, the, the workability also was hindered. We had to use some VMAs, but finally we had a stable mixture. And also the uh, use of 5% expensive agents uh, and lightweight sand and the fibers really also give very good performance. So with that, I finish my presentation and I'll be happy to take any questions if somebody has. Thank you, Kamal.